everyone. Welcome to our award-winning podcast created by George S. Corey and the artist Cleo. We're back for season three, and so are Georgie and Gigi, for more fun adventures. I'm George. I'm Cleo. I'm Steven. I'm Maya. And I'm Tavia. Welcome to The Social Contract. Once again, happy election day, everyone. I wanted to start things off with a very special announcement. If you've been enjoying this new season of The Social Contract, and we hope you have, you'll soon have an opportunity to experience it in a totally fresh and fun way. Drum roll, please. The story codas at the heart of this season will soon be available in a digital collection called Kids Are Brave Supreme Good. Set for release on December 2nd, also known as Cyber Monday, just a few weeks away, the new ebook will contain the stories in full, plus art by Cleo in all its pop technicolor glory. The collection, which will also be released as an audiobook, contains Kids Are Brave, Kids Are Supreme, and Kids Are Good. Be sure to check it out. Now, speaking of Kids Are Good, let's get to it, shall we? We have encountered some very inspirational women this season. Harriet Tubman, Katanji Brown Jackson, and we are going to get to know another one, our very own Cleo in Kids Are Good. Before we dive in, I happen to know a few things about the artist Cleo that I find quite enjoyable. I think you will too. Her idea of happiness, moving forward, and staying positive. I couldn't agree more. New things she'd like to try, parachuting, bungee jumping, and elephant ranching. Those all sound fun to me. Not sure about the parachuting, though. And she considers people who keep fighting for what's right, even against all odds, to be real-life superheroes. Love that. We're about to find out a whole lot more about Cleo in Kids Are Good, and we'll get to talk to her later in the episode. But first, Maya would like to share this inspirational quote from the artist Cleo. Thanks, Tavia. Hope is such a powerful thing. When you are hopeful, anything is possible. When you lose hope, the world seems like a very dark place. I believe so strongly in the power of art to remind us about things like hope, love, and freedom. The artist, Cleo. Well done, Maya. And now, Kids Are Good, performed by Stephen DeRosa. Very good, Gigi, said the artist Cleo when she saw how Gigi handled the fat purple chalk. You have real instinct for how to shade. The artist Cleo was a special guest instructor in Sister Elaine's fourth grade art class and was showing the kids how to shade with pastel chalks. Georgie, you're really good at holding the chalk like a pencil. That works for thin lines and detail work. But see how Gigi holds it flat so she can shade with deep strokes? That's how you want to hold it, she instructed him. Got it, Georgie replied. Thank you, Cleo. Gigi giggled and waved her piece of chalk at Georgie. He was about to stick his tongue out at her, but caught Sister Elaine's eye and immediately went back to his sketch. Sister didn't have to say a word. A look was enough. Sister Elaine had told the class all about the artist Cleo and how they were childhood friends in Atlanta where they grew up. Gigi asked if they were BFFs like her and Georgie. Sister Elaine thought about it, then said, yes, they were BFFs. They had attended the same school, belonged to the same church, and played in the same softball little league. Everybody seemed to think that we were the two best softball players, she recalled. So we ended up playing on opposite teams throughout grade school. Because the coaches wanted you to captain your own teams, right, sister? Asked Gigi. That's exactly right. 
Georgie teased Sister Elaine in a fun, friendly way. Are you sure it wasn't to keep you from getting into trouble together? Unlike you and Gigi, we weren't troublemakers, choked Sister Elaine. The first time G and G got to see Cleo's art was when Sister Elaine took her class to a Cleo gallery show at the Children's Museum, featuring huge skateboards that Cleo had painted over with words like equality, beauty, and independence. They all loved it, especially G and G, who loved skateboarding. The artist Cleo had other recent exhibitions. Cleo's Americana, and florals by Cleo. But Sister Elaine thought her fourth graders would love the skateboards best. And she was right. According to a brochure each of the children got to take home from the art show, Cleo is an acclaimed visual artist who creates in multiple mediums. Life is her inspiration, and the world is her canvas. Through her socially conscious creative work and civic awareness, she remains committed to inspiring young minds and nurturing tomorrow's leaders. One of the students asked Sister Elaine what civic awareness meant. Sister explained that it basically meant being a good citizen by furthering political and social issues. In Cleo's case, she was using the creative talents that God gave her to help people. For example, she started the Clio Capital Project in an effort to foster appreciation for the United States Capitol. And she created a Metropolitan Police Department logo to honor the brave women and men who serve in uniform. When Sister Elaine told her students that the artist Clio herself would be coming to their school to teach an art class, the kids were psyched. None more than Gigi, who was so inspired by Cleo that she had started painting little flowers and rainbows on her skateboard. Cleo walked around the room, commenting, teaching, and even joking with them. She had surprised each student with a big pad of thick drawing paper and a little tray of fat-colored chalk. The kids in Sister Elaine's art class liked how even though the artist Cleo was famous, she was nice and made each of them feel like they had potential. The standout in art class, as in drama club, was, of course, the fourth grade's little star, Gigi. If it was creative, Gigi was good at it. Psst, Gigi, Georgie whispered to her. Are you the teacher's pet? No, I'm the artist Cleo's pet. Ha, ha, ha. Fancy drawing paper and brightly colored chalk were not the only things Cleo brought with her. When it came time for a snack break, she wheeled in a three-tiered red, white, and blue cake made out of cake pops from a local bakery. Sister Elaine was firm in telling them that they could each take two cake pops. Then she called in the other fourth grade teacher, Sister Mary Catherine, and Principal Sister Teresa, to marvel at the sweet concoction that Cleo had special ordered for the class. After the kids had enjoyed their sugar fix, it was time for word art. The projector had been loaded with slides of some of the word art pieces Cleo wanted to share with them. Georgie volunteered to hit the lights, so he jumped up out of his seat and ran over to the light switch. The room darkened as the artist Cleo began her talk. She explained that words can be powerful, both saying them and drawing them. She told the class that this word art series was inspired by a presidential history project. She had to come up with a word for each of the United States presidents and create a work of art using that word. The first slide showed the word hope in beautiful blues, greens, and purples. This one is inspired by President Barack Obama, Cleo told them. He was the first black president, elected in 2008 and re-elected in 2012. His campaign slogan was one word, hope. And that word really captured the moment because people by and large were excited about the future and its possibilities. 
The next slide was a quote from President Obama. Cleo encouraged the kids to read it aloud along with her. Hope is that stubborn thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, something better awaits us, so long as we have the courage to keep reaching, to keep working, to keep fighting. The next slide was courage, in vibrant blues, pinks, and yellows. Cleo explained that President John F. Kennedy, or JFK for short, had shown great courage as a war hero during World War II before becoming a congressman, then senator, and eventually the President of the United States. He even wrote a book called Profiles in Courage, which had a young reader's edition for kids their age. She told them that when JFK was inaugurated, he gave a speech in which he said, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. This was one of the artist Cleo's favorite quotes. Next up was no fear. Big purple letters stretched across a golden yellow background. She explained how her inspiration for this work was President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who in his first inaugural address famously declared, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. They loved how the two bright blue dots that Cleo had placed right in the middle looked like eyes. Cleo explained how Roosevelt's bold leadership guided the nation through such difficult times as the Great Depression and World War II, which is why she chose to pay tribute to him with such a bold work of art. Georgie's grandma Marie always referred to Roosevelt as FDR, which he thought sounded cooler. When he told Cleo, she laughed, saying, And it's a lot quicker to say. Then she told the children about the other President Roosevelt, FDR's cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, and projected the word strength, with the letters stacked like building blocks. She explained to them that while Teddy Roosevelt was known for being physically strong, even more important was his strength of character. The teddy bear was named after him because he refused to shoot a young bear in the woods during a hunting trip. Cleo's modernist interpretation of freedom was next. As this word art appeared, Georgie and Gigi's arms shot up. They excitedly told the artist Cleo that they knew this was Abraham Lincoln's word. Then they shared with her and the rest of the class stories about how Honest Abe freed the slaves during the Civil War by signing the Emancipation Proclamation. The word art inspired by the first president, George Washington, came last. Truth. It was groovy. The artist Cleo had arranged the letters in a bright yellow ball outlined in blue against a shock of magenta. Cleo loved bright colors. She explained how it was not always easy being honest, but in the end, honesty really is the best policy. Washington, who was called the father of our country, always tried to tell the truth from the time he was a child, and that led to his becoming a great leader. As the word honor was projected, A small tear formed in the artist Cleo's eye, and she became quiet for a moment. Okay, children, Sister Elaine piped in. This one's Jimmy Carter. As honorable a man as there ever was. It's very personal for the artist Cleo because he's her all-time favorite president. Now, what do we know about Carter from our government and citizenship class? He was the peanut farmer president, exclaimed Gigi. He was in the Navy and has a submarine named after him, the USS Jimmy Carter, Georgie added. They were all chattering. Peanut farmer, plains, Georgia, habitat for humanity. The artist Cleo smiled, impressed that they seemed to know about Jimmy Carter. 
Cleo, were you alive when he became president? asked Georgie. Yes, said Cleo, way back in the Stone Age. It's not like it was a thousand years ago, Sister Elaine said. Although some days it sure feels like it. They all laughed. Cleo went on talking about Carter. He became president the same year America turned 200 years old, in 1976, almost 50 years ago. And his heart, she said, was as big as America's. Cleo liked him not only for what he did while he was president, but also because of all that he accomplished after he stopped being president. Sister Elaine nodded along, then said, Shall I tell them, Cleo? Before Cleo could open her mouth to answer, Sister Elaine told the children that Cleo knew Jimmy Carter. Ooh, I'm intrigued. What a great episode. I love how George weaved a mini history lesson right into Cleo's art lesson. Very cool. Let's talk to Cleo now. Cleo, I loved you in this episode. You're the dream instructor. Not only are you patient and encouraging, but you come bearing sketch pads, drawing chalk, and three tiers of cake pops. <laughs> that is amazing. I want to know how many cake pops can I have? And also, <laughs> how does it feel to be the star of this episode? Well, you can have as many cake pops as you want. I understand that's based on a true story. Yep. You and George came into a book signing with an actual three-tiered cake made out of red, white, and blue cake pops. That's totally appropriate for election day. I definitely need to hear that story. What in the world? <laughs> A friend of ours owns a cake pop store. He's, that's how this cake pop thing. So she's a what she calls reformed lawyer. Um, we've really become close friends with her, and so that's how the cake pops got to the election. Was well, we've got to go in. We got to take something. So we tell her that we've got these events, and we'd like them to reflect this or that. And so for election day, she came up with this three tiered cake pops, and they um they're always a hit. Apparently, I love it, George. I have a question for you. We have a most welcome addition to Georgie and Gigi's fun world this season. Yes. Sister Elaine. And yes. we've gotten to know her throughout the past couple of episodes. And now we learn that she and the artist Cleo were besties. So Sister Elaine is such a well-drawn character. I feel like she must have been based on a real person. Did you have a Sister Elaine when you were a kid in school? I went to Catholic uh, schools from pre-K through uh, junior high, and um, they were uh, run by both sisters and brothers. The sisters were Sisters of Notre Dame, the brothers were De La Salle, those are both teaching orders. And they were young, and they were cool, and they had all had regular lives, dated, and had regular lives, and then they got a calling from God. One was in uh, college, the other was in grad school, and it changed their lives. So Sister Elaine is sort of a combination of the two types of people. There's one specific sister, one specific brother. And I had one person in mind who kind of looks like uh, Sister Elaine, you know, in my mind, and who was that active and fun. So they meant a lot to me, all these people, and they really did... Uh, uh, make a difference in how I looked at the world. And I've been dying to bring in a Sister Elaine to this story, especially with the rulers and the uh, whistles and everything else. So anyhow, great. very nostalgic. It's great. Yes. That was an incredible story, George. Well, as the proud daughter of a teaching family, and now I teach too, it's in the blood. I love hearing stories like that. If we are lucky, we have a teacher or mentor or coach who sets us on a certain path, and sometimes we can stay on that path for life. So kudos to all the Sister Elaines out there. Know that you're making a difference. To quote the great Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And that, my friends brings us to the end of this episode. Keep listening for our season finale, the conclusion of Kids Are Good. 
the artist Cleo is going to share with Georgie and Gigi and us her fondest memories of former President Carter and First Lady Rosalind Carter. We welcome you to follow the social contract wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And check out our website at mytscpodcast.com. You can find George at georgescorey.com and the artist Cleo at theartistcleo.com. The Social Contract Podcast is created by George S. Corey and Cleo. Produced by Talkbox Productions and Listen. Hosted by Tavia Gilbert. Associate Producer Tatiana St. Fard. Mix and Master by Brian Barney. Additional Dialogue Editing by Kathleen Conti. Production Coordinator Brian Wilson. Social Manager Suzette Burton. On behalf of George, Cleo, Stephen, Maya, and me, Tavia, thank you for listening. <laughs>